Mock. Yeah. Ing. Yeah. Bird. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. now, I've seen everybody, him, everybody. Have you heard? Have you heard? He's going to buy me, me a mockingbird. And if that and if mocking that bird mockingbird don't sing, sing, he's going to buy me a diamond, diamond ring. ring. And if that, and if that diamond, diamond ring, ring don't, don't shine. shine. Hello once again, everyone, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Now, seeing as how the month of January is almost over already, yeah, it feels like 2019 just started and the first month is almost gone. Uh, I figured it was now or never, I better shoot or get off the pot, as they say, and bring you the first backtracks of the year. Uh, now, for the uninitiated, backtracks is my monthly roundup of notable album anniversaries, divisible by five, as well as a spotlight album or two. And as I mentioned in my last video, I used to do birthdays as well, uh, notable artist birthdays divisible by five, but it was a pain in the butt to research and it was kind of boring, a bit of a slog to uh, recite them every month on, on video, so I decided to drop that feature. Uh, the album anniversaries are far more interesting to me, they're more fun to research and all that, so uh, yeah, effective immediately I have dropped the birthdays, but uh, to make up for that I found out, also mentioned in my last video, that I found enough 1959 albums that I was able to pin down the release months of uh, that I am able to now expand backtracks backward an additional five years. So for the first time I will be making note of and possibly spotlighting albums celebrating their 60th anniversaries. Speaking of which, let's just get right into it, shall we? 60 years ago this month, Bill Haley and his Comets released their eighth rock and roll album, Bill Haley's Chicks. Now, as the title suggests, it was built around the theme of women's names. The single Skinny Mini reached number 22 on the Billboard charts. The album was produced by Milt Gabler, the uncle of actor and comedian Billy Crystal. Also released in January of 1959, trumpeter Dizzy Gillespie and saxophonists Sonny Rollins and Sonny Stitt released Sunny Side Up. This was one of the first albums released on the Verve label. Songs include On the Sunny Side of the Street, possibly a tie into the album title, and among the rhythm section is pianist Ray Bryant, who is the uncle to Kevin Eubanks and his two brothers, all of whom are musicians themselves. In January of 1964, Bobby Vinton released his seventh album, There I've Said It Again. It reached number eight on the Billboard 200 charts and was made up of popular songs from the 40s and early 50s. It featured the singles My Heart Belongs Only to You and the title track, as well as his versions of Unchained Melody, If, and You're Nobody Till Somebody Loves You. Also released 55 years ago this month was the Beatles' second U.S. album, Meet the Beatles. Nine out of its 12 tracks were from their U.K. sophomore release with the Beatles, including All I've Got to Do and All My Loving. But it also included their U.K. non-album single, I Want to Hold Your Hand, and both its U.K. and U.S. b-sides, This Boy and I Saw Her Standing There, respectively. And that song, I Want to Hold Your Hand, was the Beatles' first number one U.S. hit. Half a century ago, Tommy James and the Shondells released their sixth album, Crimson and Clover. It peaked at number eight on the Billboard 200 charts and featured the title track, which topped the singles chart, as well as Crystal Blue Persuasion, which reached number two. And as a fascinating trivia note, Vice President and Presidential Candidate Hubert Humphrey wrote the liner notes for the album as an appreciation for the band's support during his presidential campaign. Also released in January of 1969 was Led Zeppelin's self-titled debut album. It featured the single Good Times, Bad Times, which reached number 80 on the Billboard Hot 100 and the top 20 of the Netherlands charts. It also included the fan favorites Communication Breakdown and How Many More Times, and covers of two Willie Dixon songs, You Shook Me and I Can't Quit You Baby. The album was recorded for about 1,800 pounds, equivalent to 29,000 pounds in today's money, and before the band had a contract. 45 years ago this month, Carly Simon released her fourth album, Hot Cakes. It peaked at number three on the Billboard Albums chart and featured the single Haven't Got Time for the Pain, which reached number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number five on the Canadian charts, as well as Mockingbird, a duet with her then-husband James Taylor, which also featured Dr. John on keyboards and a sax solo by Grammy winner Michael Brecker. That single reached number five on the Billboard Pop Singles chart, number three in Canada, and number six in New Zealand. Also released in January of 1974 was Joni Mitchell's sixth album, Court and Spark, it reached number two on the U.S. charts and number one in Canada. 
It was her most successful album to date, earning her a double platinum certification in the U.S. Rolling Stone magazine ranked it number 111 on their list of 500 greatest albums of all time. It featured the singles Raised on Robbery, which reached number 65 on the Billboard Singles Chart, and Help Me, which was her first and only top 10 at number 7. Album track Free Man in Paris featured David Crosby and Graham Nash on backing vocals, as well as Jose Feliciano on electric guitar. Four decades ago this month saw the release of Joe Jackson's debut album, Look Sharp. It peaked at number 20 on the Billboard 200 charts and reached number 40 on the UK chart. It featured the single Sunday Papers, One More Time, and one of his biggest hits, Is She Really Going Out With Him, which reached number 21 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 13 on the UK singles chart. The album's tracks have been covered by a variety of artists as wide-ranging as Anthrax, Rita Coolidge, Sugar Ray, and Alvin and the Chipmunks. Also released in January of 1979 was Love Drive, the sixth album by The Scorpions. It was their first album on the Mercury label in the U.S. after their departure from RCA, and it was their first album to chart in either the U.S. or the U.K. It reached number 55 on the Billboard 200 and number 36 in the U.K. It was certified gold seven years after release, and featured the singles Is There Anybody There, which reached top 40 in the U.K., Another Piece of Meat, and the title track. 35 years ago this month saw not only the beginning of 1984, but the release of 1984, the sixth album by Van Halen. It was their final album with all four original members, and the last to feature David Lee Roth until 2012. The album perched itself at number two on the Billboard 200 charts for five weeks, right behind Michael Jackson's Thriller, to which Eddie Van Halen coincidentally contributed. The album was eventually certified Diamond by the RIAA in 1999, and that's an honor that's shared by just one other Van Halen album, their debut. This album featured singles including Hot for Teacher and Top 20 Hits, I'll Wait and Panama, as well as Van Halen's only Billboard Hot 100 number one single, Jump. Also released in January of 1984 was Rockwell's debut album, Somebody's Watching Me. It peaked at number 15 on the Billboard 200 and featured a cover of the Beatles song Taxman as well as singles Obscene Phone Caller, which reached the top 40, and the title track, which peaked at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100 and featured vocals by Michael Jackson. Wanting to establish himself without influence of his famous name, Rockwell was actually a self-chosen pseudonym for Kennedy Gordy, son of Motown founder Barry Gordy. Happy 30th anniversary this month to Tone Loke's debut album, Loked After Dark. It peaked at number one on the Billboard 200 charts and was certified double platinum in the U.S., and it also reached number 22 in the U.K. It featured his two biggest hit singles, Wild Thing, which reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 21 on the U.K. singles chart, and was featured in the movies Uncle Buck, Bedazzled, and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, as well as Funky Cold Medina, which reached number three on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number 13 on the U.K. singles chart, that song contains samples from Honky Tonk Women by the Rolling Stones, Hot Blooded by Foreigner, and You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet by Backman Turner Overdrive. The album also featured the less successful single I Got It Going On. Also released in January of 1989 was Electric Youth, Debbie Gibson's sophomore album. It was the highest charting album of her career, peaking at number one on the Billboard 200 charts for five weeks, and also reaching number eight on the UK albums chart. It also went top 20 in Japan, Canada, and Australia. It featured the singles Lost in Your Eyes, which was the most successful of her career, peaking at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts for three weeks, as well as No More Rhyme, which reached number 17, and the title track, which peaked at number 11. A quarter of a century ago, John Michael Montgomery released his second album, Kickin' It Up. It reached number one on the Billboard 200 and Canadian Country Albums charts, and eventually went quadruple platinum in the U.S. It featured the single Rope the Moon, which went top 10 on the Billboard Country Singles charts, and all three of his album's other singles hit number one. Be My Baby Tonight, If You've Got the Love, and I Swear, which reached number 42 on the Billboard Hot 100, and was later on a smash hit cover for the R&B group All for One. Their cover of the song went number one in 10 countries, including Australia, Canada, and most of Europe. Also released in January of 1994 was Tori Amos's sophomore album, Under the Pink. It topped the UK albums chart and peaked at number 12 in the US, where it was eventually certified double platinum five years later. It also reached the top 10 in Australia, Austria, and the Netherlands. In the US, the first single was God, which peaked at number 72 as her first Billboard Hot 100 single. Her follow-up single, Cornflake Girl, fell short of the Hot 100. Past the Mission was the third single, and it featured backing vocals from Nine Inch Nails' Trent Reznor. 20 years ago this month, Britney Spears' debut album, Baby One More Time, was released. 
Propelled by the pre-release single of the title track, she became the first and youngest female artist to have a debut single at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and a debut album at number one of the Billboard 200 at the same time. The album spent six non-consecutive weeks at number one and 51 weeks in the top 10 of the Billboard 200 chart out of a total of 103 weeks on the chart. It was a number one album in five other countries and a top 10 album in a total of 20 countries. The album eventually went 14 times platinum in the US and aside from the title track, which was number one pretty much everywhere, Singles included Sometimes, You Drive Me Crazy, and From the Bottom of My Broken Heart. Also released that same month was 1459, the third album by Sugar Ray. It peaked at number 17 on the Billboard 200 and was certified triple platinum. Singles included Every Morning and Someday, which both went top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, and Falls Apart, which reached number 29. The, title, the album track Glory was used in the movie American Pie, the album also included a cover of the Steve Miller Band's Abracadabra. The album title, by the way, is a cheeky reference to their proverbial 15 minutes of fame running out. Fifteen years ago this month, The Crystal Method released their third album, Legion of Boom. It reached number 36 on the Billboard 200 charts and received a Grammy nomination for Best Electronica and Dance Album in the first year that award was presented. Several of the album's songs have been used for movies, movie trailers, video games, and TV shows, including Starting Over, which appeared in episodes of Alias and CSI. One track on this album, I Know It's You, includes the only known time either member of the duo, in this case Ken Jordan, sang vocals on a Crystal Method track. Also released in January of 2004 was Phantom Planet's self-titled third album. Now this album marked a significant change in the band's sound from a more radio-friendly power-pop type sound to a much more post-grungy garage rock, which is one reason why I do not like the album. I just did not care for it. A big disappointment for me, and I haven't followed the band since then. Anyway, the album was produced by Dave Friedman, famous for his work with The Flaming Lips, OK Go, and MGMT, and it peaked at number 95 on the Billboard 200 charts. The album's single, Big Brat, peaked at number 20 on the Billboard Alternative Songs chart. The album's tracks were split between two drummers, Original drummer Jason Schwartzman left midway through the album to pursue an acting career. Happy 10th anniversary to Bruce Springsteen's 16th album, Working on a Dream. It was the last album to feature E Street Band member Danny Federici, who died nine months before the album's release. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, ending a seven-week run at the top of the chart by Taylor Swift's Fearless. It was Springsteen's ninth number one album, and it also reached number one in 17 other countries. Singles included the title track and My Lucky Day, both of which reached the top 40 of the Billboard Mainstream Rock Tracks chart, as well as The Wrestler and What Love Can Do. The song Working on a Dream, incidentally, was first performed during a Barack Obama campaign event two days before the 2008 election. Also released in January of 2009 was Crying Light, the third album by Antony and the Johnsons. It was the follow-up to their critically acclaimed LP I Am a Bird Now, and peaked at number one on the Billboard European Top 100 Albums chart. It was number one in Belgium and reached the top five in six other countries. Singles included Another World, Epilepsy is Dancing, and Aeon. Seven orchestra concerts were held in conjunction with the album release, including performances by the London Symphony Orchestra and the LA Philharmonic. January of 2014 saw the release of After the Disco, the sophomore album by Broken Bells, the duo consisting of The Shins frontman James Mercer and Brian Burton, the artist and producer known as Danger Mouse. The album peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200, number 3 on the Canadian Albums Chart, and number 12 on the UK Chart. It was recorded with a 17-piece string orchestra and a four-person choir. The song No Matter What You're Told features Kamasi Washington on saxophone. Singles included Holding On For Life, Perfect World, Leave It Alone, and the title track. Also released five years ago this month was David Crosby's fourth solo album, Cross. It was his first album in 20 years, and it peaked at number 36 on the Billboard 200 charts. Crosby's son, James Raymond, wrote or co-wrote and played on more than half the tracks. The album also features appearances by trumpeter Wynton Marcellus and guitarist Mark Knopfler. And that brings us to the first Spotlight album for 2019. Uh, for this month, I chose an artist that I'm a little bit more familiar with than most of the artists that uh, I choose for my Backtrack Spotlight albums. I have one of his albums prior to this one, uh, his most recent album, actually, uh, which you saw a few weeks ago in one of my videos. You could say I have another one of his albums, but it's more of a collaborative album uh, with Alan Toussaint specifically. 
uh, but I also have his two disc greatest hits album. Anyway, the artist in question is Elvis Costello. Uh, it is his third album overall, uh, Armed Forces, but it's his his second album with the attractions and the first album to actually credit them on the cover. This is the uh, I believe the UK version of the album cover, and this is the US version. And uh, I enjoyed this album very much. Uh, the the tipping point, the uh, reason that made me purchase it was what is probably my favorite Elvis Costello track, uh, at least up till now, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding. That's the track that closes this album. And it, it's still one of my all-time favorite uh, Elvis Costello tracks of the ones that I'm aware of, as I said. But yeah, a lot of good tracks in this album, and it's pretty much what I expected from uh, what I've heard of Elvis Costello so far. Uh, a very good album. Uh, it's hard to pick out really f favorite tracks on here. Oliver's Army, that's one of his big singles. Uh, Busy Bodies, I like that one. Moods for Moderns, that was an interesting one. Uh, Goon Squad, <laughs> that was I, I like that one. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I honestly can't think of a whole lot to say about this album. It's it's you know as I said, it's textbook Elvis Costello, excellent album. Oh, it's 40 years old this month, by the way, uh, January of 1979. A, a very good album. If you don't have it, I recommend it, uh, giving it a listen. Uh, excellent. I it's and it's. Uh, compelling me to uh, dig more into Elvis Costello, i got to say. But, uh, yeah, honestly, I'm kind of disappointed with myself that I'm kicking off Backtracks for 2019 with not a lot to say about this album. You know, and then that's, in some ways, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, you, you, tend to, you tend to point out disappointments more than you point out good things about an album, at least I think so. But yeah, a very good album. I don't regret picking it up at all, even though I spent full price on it, 22 bucks. Uh, but, oh yeah, and it actually, this version comes with an EP, a uh, single, uh, Watching the Detectives and Accidents Will Happen, and Allison, uh, live at Hollywood High School. So yeah, cool little bonus with that. Uh, but yeah, worth, worth the price, definitely, in my opinion. I will continue to delve into his past discography. Uh, yeah, no regrets about buying that album at all. So uh, yeah, that is it for Backtracks for January, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comments, suggestions, requests, constructive criticisms, any or all of the above, whether it's about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. Uh, tell me about it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, please be sure to subscribe as well if you haven't yet. I would love to have you as a, sub as a subscriber. And uh, check out all my past videos to see what you might have missed. Also, I invite you to check out my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are all linked to in my description below. They're all very much worth your time. Uh, they wouldn't be there if they weren't. So otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I say now, everybody, have you heard? He's gonna buy me a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing, he's a gonna buy me a diamond ring. And if that diamond ring don't shine, he's a gonna break this heart of mine.